I make a lot of stupid purchases around 2 a.m. in bed, and recently one of those included a $600 helicopter ride, which, you know, pretty cool idea, but I didn't really want to pay for that. So I had two choices, call them up and have a fairly awkward conversation, or make this into a video so I can turn that $600 into a tax write-off. I think you already know which option I chose. My idea was to speedrun a game in the air, but I knew the company wouldn't want me bringing anything too bulky up like my laptop. So my idea was the speedrun getting over it on my phone. I've done over 100 speedruns of getting over it and have a pretty good personal best of 4 minutes and 21 seconds. That was with the freedom of a mouse though, and now I would need to be using my really small phone screen and my fingers to screen the hammer, which sounded miserable, so I needed to practice. Oh yeah, by the way, I kind of forgot about this entire thing until the day prior when I got an alert on my phone, so I only had about 16 hours before I had that over. So here's the game plan. Get good enough so I can finish the game and still have enough time to enjoy the experience while getting a nice 8 hours of sleep so I'm well rested and ready to not fail. Which leads us to my practice. And let me just tell you, getting over it on the phone is not fun. There's a lot of precision that you can get with a mouse in getting over it, but on a tiny phone screen, not so much. It also probably wasn't the best that I hadn't played getting over it at all in a few months, so I definitely had to get the route back in my mind. On my very first run, we started out pretty slowly, but I got more comfortable as I went on. The general platforming in this game isn't too bad, but the precise stuff was awful. Like first of all, the chimney. In this section, we need to do a pogo jump and catch ourselves on a light, before slowly going up this awful section. There's barely any space to work with, so this definitely took me a while. Honestly, it kinda made me recall the first time I played getting over it, and I rage quit at this part so much. But after I finally made it up, we had a break from some of the terribleness, at least for a little bit. This is our first climbing straight up section, and just like with the mouse, it's pretty easy. Then after that, it's time for the whole furniture area, which wasn't my greatest platforming in the world, but after way more time than I care to admit, we made it up, and now it was time for a truly hard section. This is the orange jump, and as soon as I played this section, I knew it would be the difference between me finishing a run and not doing it. I already knew I was going to be in a pretty small helicopter, and that meant the entire ride was going to be kind of rocky. So the slow way of going up this section wouldn't work, I had to go fast. And that means we need to do multiple scary jumps with a single wrong move resulting in losing minutes of progress. Then, if that happened enough, I'd probably get tilted, and yeah, let's just hope that doesn't happen. So yeah, this was going to be the make it or break it place for my speedrun in deciding if I could get that sweet, sweet tax right off. But this is also when I learned the next unfortunate part about this speedrun. Playing getting over it on your phone really starts to hurt your thumb. Thankfully, this wouldn't be a problem for the helicopter ride since I only had 30 minutes of max anyways, but it made practice a little tougher. Then when I decided to go back to the game and finish my first phone run, my iPhone screen recording failed at the end of it. Yep, that's a thing that can happen apparently. At the very least, I did write down that I ended with a time of 1 hour and 22 minutes, and I'll explain the rest of the run using footage from my second go. So after we scale the boulders by the orange, there's this building. It's vertical so it isn't too bad, but it's also easy to fall off of if we're not careful so we gotta be smart. Like literally using a tiny bit too much power can definitely get you to go back down the mountain. But as soon as we finally make it through there, we're home free. The snow area is fairly hard since it has two tough bogos, right here at the hat jump, and the other one being the anvil jump. Then after that, we have some fairly hard jumps going through these things, but to be honest, as long as I'm playing smart, I shouldn't miss them at all. Then we also have the bucket jump, which is a pretty annoying jump, but the nice thing about this one is it's almost impossible to lose our progress. Like, we would have to mess up a ton, so I pretty much have all the time in the world here. Then after all that, we have the mountain, which just takes remembering where the notches in the mountain are, so we can swing our way up there and make it to the top. You can do this a slow and precise way, but I'm more like going as fast as I can, trying to be fairly strategic, and it usually works eventually. Which finally leads us to our last tower climb, and the space section to finish the run off. And once we make it to space, it's impossible to lose here. There's almost no chance of falling back down, so we can easily finish the run. So that's what I'm going to have to deal with on the helicopter ride, and I practiced the entire day to prepare. Then finally, in the morning, it was time to drive to the airport and finally finish what we started. Here's where we met our pilot, Jordan, who's a super cool guy, by the way, so shout out to him. And I also set up three cameras. There was a GoPro facing me for my reaction, and wow, that's a terrible angle of me. There's my screen recording to show the gameplay as clear as possible, and there was a GoPro on my head, so you could get a good view of what I saw. We even turned the white balance up a ton so you could actually see the phone screen, 
only to have the angle slightly too high. Why are all my in real life videos like this? Thankfully, I did look down a few times like right here and right here, so you can see that my gameplay does match the screen recording. But yeah, not our best setup ever. Anyways, no use worrying about that. It's time to speed run some getting over it. Jordan timed the start of his flight timer with the start of my run, so I really only had 30 minutes to beat this. That meant no do-overs, I really needed to focus up. And I started out fairly strong. Right away we needed to fly up, so there was some force dragging me out for a bit. Thankfully this wasn't much of a problem though since we were at the easy parts of the run and it's hard to mess up here. Still, I was a bit nervous this run and that did show a bit in my gameplay. Just normal stuff like some easily preventable falls and small time losses, but this wasn't the place I was worried about so I was fine with losing time here. Then we got to my first roadblock, the chimney jump. As I thought, this was much harder in a helicopter than on land. It's really precise and the vibrations of the helicopter made it difficult, but after a while, I slowed down, focused up, and got past my first hurdle. Oh, by the way, yet again, shout out to Jordan. The entire run, he specifically moved the helicopter as smoothly as possible, which made the run much more bearable. After that, we made our way to the furniture section. This part was weird because the more I practiced it on the day prior, the worse I got at it. Probably just a combination of both me rushing it and this terrible part where you need to catch yourself so you don't fall on the grill. But at least I got a second try. Then I kept going through and finally made it to the orange. I recently learned a new strat for this where instead of pogoing, you can slowly lower yourself like this and then fling up, which I found to be a bit slower but more consistent. Then after that, it was time to go up all the boulders, which I somehow played perfectly on. Even in my practice, I had never gotten an orange section this perfect and I remembered letting out a short gasp and told Jordan I was making great time. You can't really hear that though, since this is what you hear. But trust me, he was really supportive. Then I just needed to make it up this vertical part and I knew I could finish the run. So I slowly made my way up and we were officially to the snow section. After that, it was some pretty standard gameplay, but I was excited because now I knew I was no longer seeing if I could complete the challenge, but rather how fast I could. So the main villain of this story was now the bucket. I didn't talk about this guy too much earlier, but he really is evil. How the bucket works is you need to latch onto it and get lucky enough to stay on. Then you swing yourself up and keep going. If we mess up though, the bucket swings all over the place and makes it much harder to catch onto. Surprisingly though, I made it pretty fast and got onto the left side. Now all I needed to do was this simple fling in how did I just mess that up? Okay, at least I grabbed the bucket immediately after failing, and there's no way I would mess this up twice in a row, right? Yeah, I'm gonna stop going with this bit. In total, I failed this relatively easy jump five times before finally getting it on the sixth. But I mean, at least we got it, right? Now there's just two more hard sections, and the first one is the mountain. This is a part that can go really well or really badly. You just gotta hope it's the first one. But for me, it went about average, so I can't complain. Then I had the tower, which took a couple of tries, but we made it to space, finally. And here's where I lost over a minute of time for no reason. I kept pushing off space rocks in bad directions and just wasted so much time. This especially felt awful because I really wanted to finish my run and actually get to enjoy the helicopter ride. But after way too long, it was done and I finished with a time of 14.19. So I had over 50 minutes of cool helicopter stuff and this whole experience was worth it. Like we literally got to fly over a zoo and see animals from above, so that was awesome. But finally, I proved that you in fact can speedrun getting over it in a helicopter. I don't recommend trying it though.